Good morning. This is Bill from Curious Cars. It feels strange saying that, but uh, I guess it's the truth now. We've got the name changed. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, we've got the website up and running. I wouldn't bother going there yet, CuriousCars.com. We well, can go, uh, but you're not going to find much other than a uh, banner on the top and a link to the review videos here. But we're going to build that as we go. Uh, I've gotten some requests to do I even hate using the phrase social media. It just makes me sick thinking about it, but I'm going to do some. I'm going to do uh, uh, a little bit of, I, I, what do they call that, tweets or Instagrams or all the stuff that the snowflakes love, and I'm supposed to do some of it, but we'll see. We'll see. Uh, there's also going to be an email off that site where you can send in tips. You know, We're always looking for old, fun cars to buy, something interesting uh, to uh, fix up and review and sell. It's how we make a living, so we got to get that stuff. And uh, that's frankly how we ended up with this car, was through a tip. So uh, once we get all that going, there's going to be a place there, and uh, if you send us in a tip that works out for us, we're going to do something nice for I don't know what yet, but something uh, be better than a kick in the teeth anyway. Uh, and today I'm going to do a dual review. This one's going to end up on both channels, the Curious Car channel, Curious Cars. You know, Al, my buddy, who isn't really, uh, calls it by Curious Cars, which I find offensive, but I can go with it. It's fine. Uh, it does... Uh, you know, conjure up some interesting images. But uh, anyway, it's going to be on this channel. It's going to be on the Auto House channel, and uh, we'll keep the ball rolling. Uh, so there's the little update from, uh, you know, you guys here at uh, Curious Cars, the old Audi Europa channel. I can't tell you how much I appreciate the way you, uh, you know, watch the videos, comment on them, give me great hope for the future against all odds, because frankly, I usually have zero hope about anything. So thank you for that. And uh, it's been an absolute joy and a lot of fun. And this move that I made recently is starting to work out in the sense that I'm uh, marginally enjoying myself. I feel a residue of optimism for the future uh, in terms of making a living in a way that doesn't you know, make me want to throw up. So uh, that's going to be good. I'm going to deal in some of the fun stuff that I like dealing in. We're going to have some neat cars and uh, we're going to keep the ball rolling. So uh, thanks again for having a look. I'm going to take a little pause here and then we are going to start the auto house video uh, which uh, will run concurrently with this one thanks again and we'll uh, we'll see you shortly good morning this is bill from auto house of naples on a lovely florida friday it's marginally lovely you can feel that the weather's turning could be worse uh, it's not horrifically humid this morning uh, but we did have a week of much better stuff that uh, deteriorated into something else uh, there's more hurricanes heading into the gulf again they're not hitting us uh, you know all us hurricane state people we do develop that better them than us attitude and you know it's fair i mean i could say that now about the one heading elsewhere and I promise you the one that's heading to us next time they'll be saying the same damn thing so uh, what comes around goes around but for the moment we're hurricane free uh, we're mostly animal free although Peter's enormous insane oscillate of a cat was just up here looking at me creep me right the hell out Fortunately, he's melted off into the woods and isn't going to come leaping at me, attach himself to my face or something. Uh, the deer, nowhere to be seen. Uh, goats, nowhere to be seen. I saw a picture on Google the other day of deer with big fangs, so they are out there. And, uh, of course, we talked about Ulf's duck attack. I've been unable to get him to uh, duplicate the story on video. He's just too nervous to do it or too proud or, you know, damn German pride, uh, which is a shame because it was the greatest story I may have heard in a long time and uh, I do want to know the uh, outcome he did complain to his condo association about the duck once they stopped laughing I think they did actually send someone out to remove it so uh, I think all is good in the world again for Olf he can check his mail again in peace without getting uh, wound I've been severely beat up by a duck he still has issues from it uh, but um, hopefully he's feeling better now and uh, you know can move on to other foul issues and uh, anyway no more flack for the long delay into getting into the video. I'd say I'd jump right into this, but it's too late. Uh, this is a 1969 Cadillac Sedan DeVille. Uh, this is a GMC platform, one of the biggest and longest and best around. And 69, what a great year. I mean, what a, well, for some, I guess, but you had a lot of seminal shit go on in 1969. Uh, you had the moon landing, 
Uh, and frankly, you know, they had the technology to do the moon landing. They did not have the technology to fake it. So don't, uh, you know, don't give me that, you know, the thing didn't happen crap. I swear to God, like Buzz Aldrin, I just want to punch people who say that. Uh, you know, they could have, there's no way. I mean, have you seen a movie from 1969? Uh, I mean, they can barely make it believable that a guy is driving down the highway, never mind landing on the moon. So uh, for the love of God, just give that crap up. Please give that up. Uh, also in 1969, you had Nixon coming into power. You had Woodstock, all those hippies getting together and doing whatever disgusting things that hippies did. Uh, you had a, a hijacking, which was kind of fan, uh, fantastic, isn't the right word, but kind of interesting because Alan Funt of Candid Camera happened to be on the plane. So 90% of the plane thought the whole thing was a joke. I guess it was a flight from Newark to Florida or something. Uh, some guy, a little Cuban guy, breaks out a knife and says, take me to Cuba. And uh, half the, the whole crew, everyone laughing, thinking Alan Funt has something to do with it. Kind of a fascinating story, but really did happen. Uh, also in 69, what do you have? The Zodiac Killer, just, you know, he was going around doing his thing. And uh, uh, QE2, I think that started out then. The first internet stuff was happening. Uh, generally and truly a very seminal year. And the wealthy of the United States and elsewhere were driving around in Cadillacs. Uh, this was, you know, again, when stand the standard of the world, they called themselves. Uh, and, and it was true. I mean, this is when Cadillac was building cars similar to the way that Mercedes-Benz would build them into the 70s, 80s, and earlier. Uh, they were built to last. They were built to be driven forever with maintenance. Not like the stuff of today that has a sort of a planned obsolescence. I mean, this was meant to be serviced and loved. It was built with incredible quality. And uh, if you pulled up in one of these things, uh, you were one bad mofo. You you really had your shit together if you were in a, in a Cadillac like this. Uh, they were expensive. They were beautifully styled and uh, just lovely to look at. In fact, the styling of 69 was all changed and refreshed. The headlights went from stacked one on top of the other to vertical. Uh, they started to mimic the look of the very popular sporty El Dorado at the time. Uh, they lowered the tail fins in the back but made them uh, visible but subtle. They lengthened the front hood. They lengthened the back. And the thing that I love most about this particular era, the end of the 60s and uh, the very beginning of the 70s is that this was the no no interference, no compromises. There was no oil crisis going on. Gas was 35 cents a gallon. Uh, you could have insanely powerful, big, giant cars. This is what people wanted, uh, you know, before world events intervened to make government decide to save us from the cars that we want. Uh, the horsepower ratings were enormous. They didn't have to detune them or emissions them. Uh, you know, it was all about self-indulgence, about uh, no compromises and building stuff that people really liked. So uh, this is just a year of car that I really, really enjoy. They're fantastic to drive. They're lovely to look at. And uh, they really do hearken to a much simpler time uh, that was uh, enjoyable for, well, I wasn't born then, but I'm sure the people who were had a good time. Anyway, let's just get into this thing. We'll start in the trunk. <clears throat> you can see the way they sort of smoothed out the rear bumper. Very attractive little triangular taillights. Uh, nice uh, angular design, the way it comes back. You've got the Cadillac script there, uh, and uh, all just lovely. I also like the way they give you a choice. You can either flip up this little thing. Eh, maybe you can't. Eh, yeah, I don't know. Nobody's flipped it up. Anyway, there's a hole in the Cadillac crest where you can stick the key. And I, I, you know, somebody told me it's doves or something or pheasants in the crest, this whole thing that was, you know, Antoine de la Moth de la Cadillac or whatever the hell his name was. Uh, I'm sorry, those are ducks. I know a damn duck when I look at it. And when Ulf sees it, he shivers. So I know it's true. Uh, anyway, in this survivor uh, of a car, I call it a real driver quality car in neat shape. Uh, trunk is enormous. You can see the rear seals deteriorated a little bit. That'll be fun stuff for the guys who buys it to fix up. Got the original jacking instructions there. Don't get under the car while the jack is being used. I guess we did have lawyers happening in 69. Uh, you got a bunch of crap the guy brought with him. There's a spare tire and the world's biggest car cover. I removed that this morning and it was like... <sighs> I, I mean, I've just never seen a car cover that big. It must have cost $1,000. Uh, original trunk mat in there, all very nice and uh, reminiscent of the way this thing came in 1969.
Have a look under the hood. All right, under here, and you have to forgive me, my brain is not, oh my God, is that heavy. Holy shit. Anyway, uh, it was either 68 or 69 that Cadillac went from a 429 cubic inch uh, to this 472 cubic inch engine, uh, which at the time was the largest displacement engine uh, made on a production level by General Motors, maybe in the world. Uh, what the hell is it? Like uh, uh, 7.6 liters, uh, again, 472 cubes, uh, big Rochester quadrajet pump in the way, uh, going through a turbohydro 400 transmission, maybe the best transmission automatic that's ever been built by anyone. Uh, you know, if not in terms of technology, certainly in terms of longevity and strength, incredible transmission. And uh, all very simple. Uh, Cadillac also found a way to move that big engine forward a few inches, which uh, significantly reduced the transmission hump inside and created more room for the passenger. So that was the little stuff that they were thinking of back then. Uh, in uh, this year, 69, they also moved the hood forward another, and eh, like two, two and a half inches to make it appear longer longer and bigger and smoother, and uh, that styling worked out very nice. Love those big fender walls in there. So uh, anyway, on this, uh, you know, very driver example, uh, you can see it's got some surface corrosion and scratches and the stickers are sort of peeling, but, uh, you know, it is a very, very well-kept original example that if one was looking to restore, uh, would work out great. Or if one just wants to keep it running, keep it driving, keep it in mostly original condition, uh, you have an absolute blast with it. Do love those uh, horizontal headlights and the pointy grill. Uh, the points on the ends of the fenders with the big cornering lights. Uh, they're just beautifully designed cars. This is really when Cadillac meant something. You see the uh, original vinyl top on there, quite nice, lovely, and uh, very cool. I also like the uh, angled back window, the way that they've uh, split it in the middle and angled it forward. That was pretty expensive, and part of why these cars cost as much as they did. This thing was like almost six grand. Uh, back then, and I think the average car was priced around 3069 so uh, if you drove one of these, you were a Mac Daddy. Uh, you were spending some real money on it. 35 cents a gallon. could do that. Anyway, uh, I love the frameless glass on the doors. I think that's cool. Uh, there's no B pillar here in the middle, so when all four windows are down, you have this giant expanse of uh, air on the sides, which is very neat. Uh, the original condition inside is terrific. These door panels are in great shape. Uh, none of the stuff you sometimes see in later years with blowing out. And you know, they cheapened stuff as they went on. Uh, this car is uh, rem you know, sort of indicative of the quality that went into these cars at the time and uh, why they were so popular. It needs a better detail than it got. And that's where the light is. So somebody stuck that in there. And look at that. Someone's going to have to fit that back in. It's not going to be me, though. Uh, anyway, lovely leather in the back, room for three people comfortably. Your Canadians are going to be intensely chipper back there. Uh, there's going to be no issues at all with them. Uh, you've got a big package shelf in the rear. You see you got your Cadillac uh, map lights and, you know, side indicator lights. And what the hell is that anyway? Uh, maybe just a courtesy light, but it works fine. And uh, everything nice and chipper back there. You also have a uh, big armrest if you want to pull it out. No cup holders. People still weren't drinking in their cars at this point. I'm going to look over here. So again, same story. Beautiful original driver quality. Uh, that door panel in terrific shape. None of the cracks or peeling or fading, you see. Uh, the quality that's gone into it has lasted. I love the way they integrate the wiper controls, uh, everything at the touch of a button. You know, this was considered what luxury was all about then, is uh, sitting in the driver's seat, uh, having your windows up and down, your locks up and down, your mirrors adjustable, your wipers, your power seat, all at the touch of a button. More power to you, they called it back then. And uh, that was uh, part of GM's option packages. So. Top in. Try to get out of the sun for a minute. Fire this thing up. <laughs> Big block coming right to life. Very, very smooth running engine. All right, there we go. Are we out of the shade? No, we're in the shade. That's where we want to be. Okay, so.
Here we have a very lovely horizontal speedometer going up to 120 miles an hour. Nicely laid out instrument cluster. Another Cadillac logo here. You've got a clock over here. Uh, you've got your PRNDM indicator. Uh, you've got some warning lights there. You've got automatic climate control. Uh, not sure if that's working. We'll put that in the ad if it is. Uh, you've got a tilt steering column. Also a telescope. Flip that. You can move this in around. Let me fire it back down again. Get the door open so I can breathe. Oh, let's see if the radio works. Go into accessory mode here. Look at that. gross song. I'm sure some people like it. I understand that in 1969, James Brown made like five songs about popcorn. Uh, I read that a while back. I mean, I don't even know where to go with that. It's the last thing I would have thought James Brown would sing about. Uh, honestly, the last thing. Five songs about popcorn. Anyway, you've got this very nice dash, lovely, no cracks, again, original. The car just reminds me of one you would have found on a car lot in 1978 with some sales guy wearing plaid and trying to talk you into easy finance payments. Uh, you got a big glove box there with all the original stuff still in it, the owner's manual, the original owner's name. I think there's a protective plate in here somewhere. Well, that's an Illinois Air Team, whatever the hell that means, your new warranty. Yeah, there it is. Let me see if that's it. Yeah, look at that. We got our Cadillac protective plate. Very, very cool. And uh, all as it should be. Also love those big original floor mats with uh, the rubber and the crests. Very cool. You got these giant, giant sun visors. Sun is not going to be an issue for you. And uh, well, let's go for a drive. I love the way that thing sounds. So I read an original review on this car from back in... Uh, 1969 from a road test uh, magazine and what they said about it is it was the most incredible driving car uh, but it didn't handle for shit yeah well no kidding <laughs> I mean, that really wasn't the point of this thing. Has an incredibly soft suspension, has an over-assisted uh, steering and brake, although the steering was variable. It did tighten up on the highway uh, by design. Uh, but this was a cruiser, man. I mean, this 472 at 70 miles an hour is not gonna be stressed. It's gonna go down the highway at 2,000 RPM. Uh, you're gonna float along with the ride of your life. I mean, an incredible ride on these cars. And just a lovely way to get to the country club or uh, wherever people went in 1969, you know, massage parlors or, uh, you know, brothels. Uh, you know, I don't know what people did. Meetings of the Senate. Uh, these are things that people were probably getting into then. And uh, it was a lovely way to get there in an old Cadillac like this, new at the time. I'm sorry, I'm rambling. All right, with the sun, yeah, we're going to do it anyway. Let's go for a spin. The sun's crazy. All right, I'm going to wait till I take a turn uh, up at the end of the road. All right, so beautiful job on the windshield by the detailers. Uh, they really are getting more retarded as time goes on, but I'll try not to get angry this morning. Uh, so anyway, here it is, 51 years after this car was built, the point of it still comes across loud and clear. Incredible build quality. Again, this has lasted 51 years of normal driving. I mean, obviously it's got low miles, but it wasn't kept by some psycho who wanted it to be perfect. It was driven. It was enjoyed. Uh, you've got everything at the touch of a button, you know, your power windows, locks, radio, tilt wheel, telescope, uh, the seat power adjusts to be where you want it. Very, very comfortable. All right, so here's a quick indicator of why I say I've got like just a residue of optimism. You know, I take the right turn, I start filming, uh, all of a sudden I get a low space warning on the camera's hard disk. So I think, okay, I'm going to pause it and check that out. Uh, I pull over to the deceleration lane down there. Uh, go to make a U-turn after deleting a couple of the old videos on the uh, camera. Uh, I hear a bang from the front, front end dives, flat tire. And let me tell you, a flat tire in an old car like this, you feel it. Secondary to that, when you've got a big block uh, all the way towards the front bumper of the damn thing, you're not driving on a flat tire, not even for, you know, a couple hundred yards to get back 
down into Peter's uh, Street. So I pulled over here. Uh, all the tools, of course, because it's a nice old survivor car there. Get everything jacked up, start changing the tire, and then little Dalton, the detailer, whose job it is to air up the tires and the spare tire, goes ahead and doesn't air up the spare tire. And this is one of the reasons I love him so much. Oh my God, do I love him a lot. Uh, so I called him, he answers in his typical manner, yeah, hello, hello. And I've got him now heading this way uh, with my little uh, racetrack DeWalt tire inflator to do what he should have friggin' done in the detail bay, uh, you know, a couple of days ago. So if there's hate in my heart, uh, there it is. But at least I'm gonna let it out so I don't push it way down. So side of the road, sun beating down on me, even on this somewhat milder Florida whatever day it is. And uh, I'm waiting for a little retard to show up with an air inflator so I can get the Cadillac home. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. Oh, and Peter did tell me he ordered tires for this because he thought the ones on here were bad. <laughs> that might have, been, uh, might have been a nice bit of information to have before my video. So uh, anyway, there it is. Uh, I'm going to pick up the video now as soon as Dalton gets here and airs it up. We'll finish it off. We'll put it down on paper and move on to the next one. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to have another few cigarettes. Wish I brought my little thing of whiskey with me, which I didn't, and uh, wait here in the middle of all this traffic uh, for this shit to be over. See you in a minute. Well, and that was nice. You can't see it now. <laughs> But I just had a drive-by from a Collier County Sheriff's Department community service truck. Uh, I'm sure that truck had a tire inflator on it. I mean, what the hell? Am I not part of the community? I mean, could the guy not have pulled over for 12 seconds? It's not like the community service guy is responding to a murder or a rape or something. You know, at worst, there's a friggin' cat stuck in a tree. Uh, but anyway, yeah. Just drive by, full speed, probably sipping a coffee, uh, thinking about how he's going to spend his pension when he retires at 45. And uh, I get to stand here and sit here being very, very hateful once more. So what the hell did these people vote to have another 1% increase in sales tax for if I can't get a friggin' community service truck to stop for 15 friggin' seconds and air up my tire? <sighs> anyway, we'll go in a minute. Right, so Dalton has arrived to rescue me in the trusty Silverado. Of course, that always has air in the tires, and if it doesn't, it's got the facility to put air in the tires. He's now retroactively filling the spare tire. I appreciate that, Dalton. A little bit late on the spare tire filling, but uh, better late than never. So very happy about that. Have a look at the old tire. It's what I would call a uh, catastrophic failure. So, yeah, anyway, what a great friggin' Friday morning. We'll get some air in there and uh, finish the damn video and move on. All right, so this is going great. Here you can see the uh, pressure that's going in. We got it set to 36. We're at zero now. Oh, oh, look. There's the valve stem. Hey, Bill, while I was trying to fill up the spare tire, I found out that the valve stem isn't connected anymore. Do you want to do anything about that before you drive the car? <sighs> okay, I'm going to stop bitching now. We're going to pull the spare off the Chevy truck. <laughs> Hopefully it's the same friggin' bolt pattern, and uh, we'll see what happens. Well, that's it. I've had to admit defeat. Uh, the valve stem fell off the spare. <sighs> The extra tire and wheel I had in the bed of the Silverado was Ford pattern, not Chevy pattern. The Silverado has six lug wheels, GM, the Cadillac 5, so a tow truck is on the way. I'm heading back in the Silverado, and we're just going to carry on. If I were still in the Cadillac, I would have finished up by saying what a wonderful old car it was, how the full frame and soft suspension and big V8 just makes it such an effortless Boulevard cruiser and an absolute joy to drive. Uh, I would also point out that the people who bought cars like that back in the day, uh, when GM left them and stopped building them, they moved to cars like this, Silverados and other full frame trucks. So if you ever wonder why you see so many pickup trucks driving around, uh, it's because, uh, you know, people just love the way the big full frame stuff drives, smooth 
moodness cruising space and uh, pickup trucks became the only way uh, for people to get those things anymore at least in the way they used to so there it is that's a typical Friday morning for Bill and why he has and I'm talking about myself in the third person that's wonderful has so much hatred for and there's cops around love me and Dalton picked uh, the truck to drive that had no tag on the back so Thank you for having a look today. Appreciate it. We'll see you with the next one. Take care.